Welcome everyone. Welcome to the 10 o'clock hour with Professor Z. Um, it's a little bit late, yes, but I sort of uh, appreciate this time because I've had a long day teaching. I'm a little wound down now so we can actually focus on this stuff at hand. And as you know, many entrepreneurs work very late into the night, so this is perfect. I've been a night owl most of my life. This is the time I'm the most creative. This is the time that I'm most active, most driven, so this is the perfect timing. And uh, so welcome to Entrepreneur Talk Live with Professor Z. This is Professor Z. This is the founder of Professor Z, guiding you on your journey to success, freedom, and satisfaction. And we'll talk more about what does it mean to have success, freedom, and satisfaction. So a lot of people are looking for success, obviously, but we're also looking for freedom. We talked about that last week, and satisfaction is where we're going to get to. So um, we will... And hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll explore that fully. So as of right now, this is the episode, this is the third episode for me. And today I promise that we'll talk about a topic that's very personal to everyone, which is how to actually make some money, right? Um, this sounds like a high pressure sales of a get rich quick scheme or multi-level marketing. Trust me, it is not. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the mindset of inspiring yourself to try to create wealth and create income and try to do something for yourself but it comes from within it's no there's no i mean i guess there is a secret formula but a secret formula i can tell you right up front is hard work and doing the right things at the right time it is there's no quick way to get there you don't cut corners you just have to work really hard but work smart at the same time so um, i'm going to break down into uh, what does it mean to actually work smart and we'll talk about that today so today we're going to talk about um, first, I started last week talking about we're going to actually take on a journey to make a million dollars. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about what that means and what journey I'm taking through the coming weeks. And second, we're going to focus on how to make that first $50,000. Um, I'll, I'll explain why I picked $50,000. and it, it, It's important to understand that. And third, we'll look at a few examples and what kind of path that you could choose and what path I've chosen to reach that fifty thousand dollars and so you know i'm going to talk about these things and then i'm going to touch a little bit about a little bit on the challenges that you will face so stick around and i don't know how long this will be this session but generally between half an hour and 40 minutes and i'll run through those things and hopefully you can follow along this journey with me on a weekly basis and we'll work on it together and then you can choose your you can choose your top topic in your project and i'm going to choose mine you can follow along just like the classes i do in person hopefully this will work out great all right so um without further ado i'm officially starting a journey to go to try to make a million dollars in a project and as you guys know m many of you subscribe through my video of how to make a million dollars, the simple approach, which is the mathematical approach. And to recap, I broke down how to make a million dollars into uh, either getting a million people to pay you $1 each, or 100,000 people to pay you $10 each, or 10,000 people to pay you $100 each, and so on and so forth. And last week I said, I've picking the path and I'm gonna try to illustrate that we are going to, you, we're gonna, together you will see and hopefully you will follow along on your own and on your own project that we can make a million dollars somewhere down the road. And that will, uh, the path I've chosen is $100 and 10,000 customers. Right, so that's how I'm gonna get to a million dollars. And uh, so let's think about that for a second. So I want 10,000 people to pay me $100 each. Um, what do you think? Is that super difficult? So, of course, there are some difficulties involved, but to me, it doesn't seem to be super difficult. And that's because, think about and reflect how many things do you pay for um, on your day, on a day, in a daily basis that you pay a hundred dollars for. Um, you know, if you some of you have more money, some people, some of you have less money, but paying a hundred dollars isn't really some really a huge purchase. It's not a small purchase. It's not loose change, obviously, but it's not a huge purchase. And let me break down that a little bit more. If I want to get, ask you or anyone to pay me a hundred dollars, the easier way might actually think of this way is a hundred dollars actually translate only to eight hundred and thirty-three cents. So C and I am a professor and I do 
teach quite a bit. So I'm gonna write this on the, I brought along a whiteboard and marker and we're gonna go through this. So I want people to pay me a hundred dollars per year and that equals to $8.33 per month. Wrote that here, you see? So $100 a year equals to $833 a month. So now let's think about what kind of things do you pay for that's less than $10 a month? And I've thought of a few, and I'm only gonna go through that uh, a bit in, in, in the second half of this uh, stream. But instead of going for $8.33 a month, how about we go for $10 a month, but if people were to be able to make a lump sum payment, you charge them $100 a year in a, as a lump sum payment. There we go. So $10 a month instead of $8.33 a month, the $1.67 is not make a whole lot of difference. But if you charge $10 a year a month, that equals to $120 a, month, uh, a year. So $10 a month, $120 a year. Or you just simply charge them $10 a month or um, $100 a year as a lump sum. Sorry, I, I think I said that wrong. So $10, if you break down to $10 a month, that equals to $120 a year, or you can give them a discount of almost 20%. You can give them $20 off and just have them pay you $100 in a lump sum. So this is the approach I've taken. Obviously, you can do it any other kind of ways. So you can do you can do a hundred dollars a month and a thousand dollars a year, but you know reflect on what you would pay for a hundred dollars a month. That's probably not a lot of things. I don't think my cable bill is a hundred dollars a month. So to get somebody to pay you a hundred dollars a month might be a little bit tough. Um, I do. I own a law practice, right? I, own, I I have my own law firm. I was thinking for this exercise, I would charge $100 a month and I will find, try to find a thousand customers to make $100,000 or 10,000 customers to, to well, yeah, I'll find a thousand customers to pay me $1,000 a month or $10,000 a year. But I think that for most of you, being able to charge somebody $1,000 might not be very practical because it really is in a professional realm. It's pretty cheap for, uh, $100 a month or to $1,000 a month is pretty cheap for a lawyer, but for most everyday people and for most consumers, you're limiting your customer into people who can afford that. But I think mostly everyone can afford $10 a month. So, so that's why I chose to do, this, uh, to do this project. And then so then that leads me to talk to you about why I'm choosing $50,000 as today's topic. That's because $50,000 is not a lot of money compared to a million dollars, right? $50,000 is still a lot of money. If any of you watching had $50,000 right now, let's say if you bought a lottery tickets and won $50,000, you're probably jumping up and down for joy. You go on Jeopardy, you go on a game show, you won $50,000, that's a big deal. So I'm not saying 50,000 is not a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, compared to trying to accomplish a million dollars, 50,000 really isn't, right? Compared to a million dollars. So, but do you, what's the difference between making $50,000 and a million dollars? Well, if you ever going to make a million dollars, don't you have to make $50,000 first, right? You have to make 50,000, then you make 100,000, then 150,000, then 200,000, so on and so forth until you get to a million dollars. So the question is, if you are capable of making $50,000, what's stopping you from making a million? All you have to do is do the same thing over and over again for 20 additional times, then you'll have a million dollars, right? So then what's the difference between a skill set of making $50,000 and making a million dollars? There are some minor, there are some differences. But if your product and your service is the same price, let's say $100 a year, and you are able to get 500 uh, customers to pay you that money, or 50 customers to, to pay you that money, and you were able to bring in $50,000, then all you have to do is figure out a way to expand, because you're already proven that people will give you that kind of money, will buy your service, you can make that money. You just have to either work harder or work more. And you know that there's, there are challenges and difficulties in that. But the formula itself doesn't change. Once you figure out how to take something out to the marketplace and get, pe pay pe get people to pay you $50,000, then you already know the winning formula. You just have to figure out how to do it. 
That's why I chose fifty thousand dollars. Right? So then this is today's challenge. This is what I'm doing. We're gonna do five hundred customers times ten dollars a month or a hundred dollars a year. This this is what I'm going for. I'm going to find 500 customers that pays me $10 a month or $100 a year. And I don't know what I'm going to do yet, which is what we're going to talk about today. But this is what I decided. And, you know, before we move on to the next step, think, think to yourself, how difficult is this? How difficult it is to find someone to pay you $100 and then you just need 500 of those people. Let's keep that thought. So now that we established that um, mathematically, that's how we're going to do it. I also want to talk about why it's important to be able to do make 50000 rather than 100000 That's because a million dollars sounds like a lot of money. Many of you clicked on my video for a hundred a million dollars because that is just a lot of money, right? If I make a video and put it on YouTube and say, hey, everybody, I know how to make $50,000, I'm not so sure how many of people would actually click on it. Maybe some of you will, but many of you might be actually making more than 50000 or you know how to. You go to college, you get a degree, you go to grad school, you get an MBA, you get a good job, you make more than $50,000. So why are we talking about making $50,000? So... But a million dollars, everybody just zone in, hone in on this a million dollar idea because a million dollars sounds like a lot of money and it's usually not so attainable. So my job in life or my lesson that I learned in life has always been if you take something that's really difficult to you per perceptually, very difficult to achieve and we break down into bite-sized pieces and little, little steps and you take it one step at a time, then the grand thing can also be achieved. I mean, the, w w what do we say? A journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Um, it's not like the second step or the third step or the fourth step is any bigger than the first step. All you have to do is figure out how to take that first step and you just keep repeating it over and over and over again. And eventually you'll get somewhere really far away. And that's how I've been dealing with my life, right? Starting from living on the streets and working at restaurants. But I've always thought I, I want to drive nice cars and I want to live in a nice house. I want to have a lot of money. I want to go on vacations and I want to have all those stuff. But you can't just do that overnight. I mean, you could. You can go buy a lottery ticket, then you, you, you win, then you can do it. But for most people, you can't do that overnight. You have to do it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. You grind at it and eventually you will make it. What I want to do is to help you figure out how to do that grind a little bit smarter and a little bit more effectively and then you, for you to choose a grind that will actually get you to where you want, which is a million dollars or more. To get, a no, to get a normal job and work there for 30 years or 40 years might actually get you a million dollars, right? There are a lot of retirees with a million dollars in their 401k, in their RRAs, but a market crash like what happened last month, you lose half of your value. I mean, my accounts lost half of the value. So what you want is a sustainable way to, it's a sustainable way to continue to be able to generate wealth regardless of what's going on outside. Uh, thank you for coming. So um, I, okay, um, small engine business. So bear with me. I'm going to go, I'm going to go through this $50,000 part and I'm going to uh, um, help you and talk to you a bit about your business, Hector. Thank you. Um, so, all right, so I was talking about how why $50,000 is important, and this is to you as well, Hector, is that when you have a small business, to get, to be able to generate some revenue, small revenue, and make small success, small victories, and then replicate it over and over again, right? So some days you come into your, you come to your business, and you turn on your computer, and you're like, uh, wow, I made three sales yesterday, and I usually don't only make one. That means you made two extra cells. All you have to do is figure out what's the formula to get you those two extra cells, and you will you can replicate that over and over again. That's why I'm decided to talk about fifty thousand because if we did fifty thousand, we can do a hundred, we can do one fifty, we can do two hundred. All right. So um, for for 
for you that's already had the business idea and let's just conceptualize and kind of think about how you can translate what you already do and what you already sell into a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars how do you replicate and duplicate and multiply that but for those of you that are thinking about just starting you don't have an idea yet and like i'm taking on a new project w with you guys here in this live stream i haven't decided what i'm going to do yet so but i did decide i want to charge ten dollars a month or a hundred dollars a year so i went and did a little bit of market study and this is what everyone should do you should look at your competitors, you look at your industry, and think about what you can do to generate the kind of money you are trying to make. So at $10 a month, these are the things, I have, I have a sheet over here that I did earlier. These are the things that I figured out um, what I want to generate $10 a month. So first, entertainment, right? Um, Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Spotify, all those things are around $10 a month, right? Entertainment. But realistically, am I really that entertaining? Maybe to some people, maybe not. I don't sing particularly well. I don't play music. So for me to say, I want to start a streaming service or I want to do a subscription service. Well, maybe the, if this channel gets bigger, maybe I'll charge $10 a month. But I don't think that's what I'm going for. So that is not the uh, the industry that I'm going for. I mean, for many of you, that's not really uh, practical or realistic. So two, what do you pay for $10 a month? Two Starbucks, two Starbucks coffee. Right, five dollars a piece. You pay two of them a month. That's ten dollars. All right, a lunch maybe. You know, many of us. I go to a sushi place to get a lunch special. That's ten dollars right off the bat. You get a, you get a sandwich or a soup somewhere. That's ten dollars. Or a cheap membership to something. You know, if you go to uh, Planet Fitness or many other like small membership based business, and I actually own a business that has a. Uh, membership that's somewhere between $79 a year to $300 a year. So maybe a membership based business. And that's an industry I know well as well, right? Some of you cook, so maybe the lunch idea works better for you. Some of you maybe know how to roast coffee. Maybe you want to start a coffee shop. But either way, these are, I've chosen to do some sort of monthly subscription based membership type business online in the app that I'm going to build because I'm capable of building the app and I know the industry well. So, voila, I've decided, and as a part of this experience of project, that I am going to start a app. I'm gonna build an app and start a community, an e-commerce community, where I'm going to charge people, small businesses actually, $10 a month to be a part of that membership. Something like that already exists. Meetup, if you know meetup.com, I just started a new group. I, I run three meetups in Philadelphia. Um, I just started another one. Meetup charges you $20 a month, and uh, you can start three groups. So that's about $8, 7 to $8 per group. So that's their business model. I'm not. I'm going to do something similar, although I'm going to provide something different than just meetup. You guys will see. In the, in the month, in the month, uh, in the weeks after this, I'm going to just tell you a little bit, a little bit as I build this model build this app and i'm going to show you what i'm building and then uh, maybe you can even participate and be a part of it all right so let me see let me uh, i'm gonna write hector do you have so if you guys have any specific questions please feel free to add um put it in the chat All right, so then what are the, uh, while I'm waiting for to see if I get questions, so what are the challenges of doing what I just said? Um, so I have three challenges here based on the model I set up. I'm gonna do an online app-based subscription member-based business where I provide someone of some value in exchange for $10 a month. So there's three challenges that I see here. One, getting people to pay. Two, making the product. And three, finding five five hundred customers because I was trying to get to fifty thousand dollars. Well, one, getting people to pay. I just said people spend two, people spend ten dollars on two cups of coffee. So I don't think getting people to pay ten dollars isn't really that difficult if you give them something that's useful. And making a product, well, obviously I know how to make apps, so to me it is not difficult to make. But and but in your line of business, in something that you are trying to think, you are going to be able to do something well. And why not do that? If you know how to cook, for example, you make a really great lasagna. 
why not bake lasagna in your house and sell it for $10 a piece, package it up and sell it for $10. And then it's, so the third, the hardest thing in growing any business is finding the customers. Right here for $50,000, I said I need, you need 500 customers. For a million dollars, I need 10,000 customers. So 10,000 customer, customers, you see I'm answering your question, Hector. But getting 10,000 customers is difficult. You gotta advertise, you gotta spend money to bring people in. What about 500 though? Again, that's why I'm choosing 500. I have more than a thousand contacts on my LinkedIn. I have more than 500 on my Facebook, my personal Facebook. I have maybe a couple hundred on my Instagram because I don't do Instagram that well. And uh, I have, I think, 400 something on my Twitter, right? Some of those are overlaps, but I would say overall, all together, I can probably have 2,000 people right now if I pick up my phone and just send out message to any one of them. And think about how many people are on your pages, on your Facebook account, on your Twitter account, on your YouTube, on your anything, social media. So if you, once you figure out how to sell somebody $10, a service or product for $10 a month, all you have to do is to hit up everyone you know and get them to pay you $10 every month for a year and you have $50,000, right? How difficult is that? It is not easy. Nothing is ever easy, right? Anything that's worth anything is not easy, but it isn't insurmountable. It isn't impossible, right? So just think, I'm selling something that someone wants. If I go re personally reach out to everyone I know, can I find 500 people that will want to pay that amount of money? And so for Hector, I think so Hector has a question that you have a small engine business. So I'm assuming, well, well, I don't know. First, I don't know what kind of engine it is. I actually used to own a motorcycle shop. For most of you who don't know, I used to race motorcycles for a living. I was a professional racer in my 20s. So I had a car shop. I had a motorcycle shop. I worked in one and I started my own. And I, I didn't work on engines all that much. I did rebuild a, rebuild a couple of them. I worked on suspensions for motorcycles. So... Um, for a mechanical or auto kind of businesses, you you don't make ten dollars per customer. You usually make a hundred dollars customer or a thousand dollars customer, depends on what it is. So in my example, I um, I took the forks on motorcycles. So people send me the forks on the motorcycles. I'll take it apart. I'll change the internals. I'll change the oil. I make it run better. And, and I ship it back out to them. And I charge, I believe, about $800 $900 per set of forks. And the cost to me is about $100 in parts and the labor and the supplies, maybe another $50 in supplies. So I will take in $800, $900. I will, it will cost me $150 to $200 with all involved, and I'll make $600. Bucks. So I, I do remember, I, the shop closed about uh, 12 years ago. That's actually why I went back to law school, part of the reason. But I remember I made about $600 per customer. So I keep thinking if I can get 100 customers a month then I'll make $60,000 a month, right? And that was a side business. I was still doing the e-commerce stuff. Um, it's, it's sort of a hobby business that I built into to a bigger business. So what I did, and this is probably something that you could do with Hector for you as well, is to reach out to it personally, individually build a community around your business. Um, that means if you, I don't know what kind of engine, but there are, there are people on Reddit, there are people on Facebook groups, there are people everywhere that want, that congregates and because their interests are common or they look for common answers. So you can provide value by people by giving some free advice, for example, or some free service. Chainsaws, cool. All right, so I'm going to use a Honda chainsaw. All right, so you, there are people that does, so for example, there are people that does a, um, a landscape, uh, what is it called? Landscaping. And there are people that service trees, right? And those people online, they have their own communities. And that's, that's the wonder of internet and online business. I think if you just go around and look on the internet, you can probably find a community that are either into these small Honda engines or um, are into uh, landscaping. And funny you talk about small engines. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to move the camera for a second. So as a flower pot, I, I don't know if you can see it. As a flower pot, I have a Yamaha small engine box sitting over here. So I have a I have a Yamaha generator sitting here, and uh, that I haven't opened, I haven't unboxed it because uh, 
um, one of my businesses is actually sponsored by Yamaha power generation and small engines so um, funny not Honda but Yamaha but anyway uh, so you should find a group of people right an online community or service community on uh, whatever whatever that is reach out to them be a part of the community don't just go sell you know if you go to one of those groups and they're gonna say well you can advertise in our group yes you can advertise in the group but you guys all know about ads right you read ads sometimes you're like well I don't want to bother with ads but you can be a part of their community you can just be someone you can go in you can give advice you can say well this is what I do I fix more engines I can give you some tips to prolong your engine I can tell you know somebody might ask how long do I need to do do I need to change my oil often do I use synthetic oil do I use a conventional um, what should I do how do I count hours and you know that kind of stuff and you can go and just be a part of that and then you can use YouTube right I'm sure you are expert in small engines and why not just make how-to videos maybe you do that as well and if you're not start doing it just take a cell phone make how-to videos on how to change my chains chainsaw oil and one of the one of the things that about generator with this generator is that I, I had I had an old Honda generator which is it was red on my I don't remember the the model but I never knew how to change the oil on it right so even though I ran a shop it's not my area so I just don't I knew that oil need to be changed but I never went and changed it so I will take it to the shop and have somebody else service it so if you can just bring some value to people let them know hey hey this is what this is what I can offer you I can help you guys with um, tips with tricks and with uh, um, maintenance kind of things then maybe people will then get to know you and remember that one you are you are helpful right two you are authority on the matter so when they need service they will contact you and they will ask you for help and as I said your you know your business you're gonna charge more than a little bit more than just what I'm saying like here ten dollars if you can make a hundred dollars per person hey if you want to make a million dollars how many people do you need to reach right you need ten thousand customers if you then that means you get a thousand customers a month you get ten thousand customers a year you get uh, you get 30 customers per day you will have a thousand customers a month so if you get 30 customers a day and you charge them a hundred dollars a day yeah you, you have a million dollars thank you for coming starting from nothing 10k in a month all right hi sky thank you for joining me and uh, thank you for asking the question um, if you just just joining later you can watch the beginning of it I actually um, I started by uh, this the, the topic of this live stream is making fifty thousand dollars and hopefully in a way to get you to a hundred thousand uh, and then a million dollars so because my video obviously you guys all see it was for a million dollars but I'm starting with fifty thousand so if you want to make ten thousand dollars a month and I have a board here I'm gonna do the math for you So first of all, if you're 22, I don't know if you go to college or if you if you're into the um, going through the normal route, but making ten making ten thousand a month um, doing a job, some sort of job, isn't actually super difficult. It's still attainable. I think if I was just looking at it today because I teach business, if you go and for example get an MBA and working at a decent sized good business, you can probably make more than a hundred thousand a year. But that's not to say that maybe that's what you want to do, but that's certainly a path. When I teach the entrepreneurship class, I always say to people, hey, maybe you should always consider maybe you want to start your career in a job. Maybe you will like that more because there's some certainly more uh, stability there. But if we're simply talking about entrepreneurship or being your, your own boss and small, opening a small business, then 10,000, this is one of the ways I will look at the question you asked. Ten thousand dollars a month. It, I will break it down to because there's thirty days in there's thirty days in a month, but maybe you don't want to work every single day. So let's say you work five days a week, not even six days a week. You work five days a week. You work four weeks uh, per month. That's twenty days. That means you need five hundred dollars per day times twenty days. Yeah. So five hundred dollars a day times twenty days. And that will get you to ten thousand dollars a month, and that's a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. That's uh, this is simple math. It doesn't count for overhead or um, taxes. But then the question is, how to 
make five hundred dollars per day how to make five hundred dollars per day you know next time maybe I'll set up my second computer so I can just type on a screen or write on a board uh, write on a screen I'll try that next time so how do you make five hundred dollars a day well continue on my very simple so simple that some people really have a problem with me doing so uh, my simple math is five hundred dollars a day let's break it down to five dollars times a hundred times or fifty dollars times ten times or five hundred dollars times one time right that's what I wrote down fifty five hundred dollars a day equals to five dollars per person a hundred persons or fifty dollars per person times ten persons or five hundred dollars per person one person so what do you think will be the best way to do? Well, it's kind of an abstract question. I think you start off with what you can offer, right? Many of us do something well, or at least I like to do something. So let's say if you like doing hair, and I many of my students are come they want to own hair salons or they want to do something to do with hair and beauty. So let's say if you pick something to do hair and beauty. Can you possibly make fifty dollars per customers? And if you can get fifty, if you can actually charge fifty dollars per customers, and based on your request, you only need to find ten customers a day, right? Ten customers a day. You even break it down even more. You work from nine o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night. That's one per hour. So how? What can you do for one customer per hour and charge fifty dollars? I'm just throwing out ideas here, so you can feel free to comment on in the chat, and if you like it or you don't like it. But for example, if you did if you did hair, I'm gonna continue to do hair, or you know what, I'm gonna say I do nails. So my wife did nails for my kids as because we were all bored in the house, and uh, I have two little daughters, and then she did nails, and well, she I think she had like probably a hundred type of nail polish, and she was just doing the nail polish for everyone. And uh, for we pick, we let them pick out which one they want. They did sparkling nails and stuff. So let's say if you charge fifty dollars to do nails, but what you do a little bit different because you don't have a place to do it is that you travel on the site. Maybe you have a van. Maybe you do it in a van. In New York, they have those blow dry bars, and you just go into the, you walk into a trailer and you do you do hair and you pay them and on lunch breaks. So suppose you did nail. I'm, Again, just for example, suppose you did nail in person, like on demand, traveling nail tech, and you charge fifty dollars plus materials to do. And then all you need to do is find ten customers per day, right? And many of young people, many young people are out there driving Uber. You might take two or three fares an hour and only get paid twenty dollars. But if you were willing to drive around and deal with strangers and offer something more of value, then maybe you can do better than that. Instead of delivering for Grubhub, maybe you figure out how to make homemade meals and sell them the meals as well as delivering it, right? So what we what we need is a platform for you to sell your talent. And this is the best way to do it. And I'm going to tell you, the economy is going to change. And some of you are being laid off. I'm so sorry. And you guys, hopefully you guys will find your footing soon. And maybe that's why a lot of people are thinking about entrepreneurship. I went back to school. I reinvented myself multiple times because of necessity because I wasn't doing well so I can certainly understand so this is the time where you know the majority of America is stuck at home spending money online or trying to figure out how to make money online so this is the perfect opportunity to think about how to be an online entrepreneur to be an e-commerce entrepreneur so um, I was a software developer so I can make I can make software I can make apps so I'm trying to utilize that part of my skill set to to make money and to illustrate how to make money online but you don't have to be a tech person to make money online right many of you if you watch enough videos on YouTube or read enough stuff online you already know people are doing drop shipping on Amazon and people are people are doing um, doing custom t-shirts on on custom on demand print t-shirts people are doing tattoos on you know on demand people are cooking home cook homemade meals and delivering to people and then we had my wife had gotten someone to someone was doing like their homemade juice blends and they were delivering in the morning and charge on a subscription basis I know people that um, 
that own gyms and because gyms are closed so they are leasing out they're renting out their exercise bikes so people can use it at home so there's a lot of stuff that you can do and if your goal is if you break down the numbers break down your skill set what you can do you i'm sure you can find something that can support the amount that you're looking for um, those kind of businesses not it's very difficult to get to a billion dollars or a hundred million dollars or ten million dollars but one million dollars as that's the exact reason why I made that video is that one million dollars is a achievable goal for most of us um, because if you you know like my my wife is Jamaican and then her mom makes really good Jamaican food I would say if she really had nothing else to do she can stay at home just keep cooking uh, Jamaican food and you know pack it up herself and just sell it out of the house and then she'll probably still be able to make um, at least ten thousand dollars a month and you already have all the material you have to know how already if if you watch if you watch the the triangle of uh, success model the video that I had is that you need resources you need talent and um, and then you need uh, you need the time to do it right let me see if I can draw it and try this out well, you need skills, you need skills and you need resources. And you have the most, for most of you, you already have the skill and you already have the resources. So you have no problem on getting it started. Because I said, if you, even if you, if you're missing money, that's okay. As long as you know how to do something and you're willing, you have the drive to go do it, you should be able to do it. All right. So hopefully that's a little bit of inspiration and can help you a little bit in thinking. And now that we all stuck, you know, stuck in the house and just take the time to plan. Um, t today is actually I finished my spring classes for entrepreneurship so I pretty much made most of the videos in the planning phase of my my lectures so if you go on to the five minute entre entrepreneurship lecture playlist you'll see all the planning videos there already so if you just go one by one and I, I, I have a number as well so if you go one by one take your time watch watch through them and then you should be able to know how to make a business plan and make a pitch and you know just conceptualize what you want to do and then starting from there try one thing if one thing at the end you're like well this is not going to work out because it's not going to make me that much money i don't think i'm going to enjoy it or it's not worth my time and try something else it's all your waste is a little bit of your time planning and uh so just keep planning until you come up with a good idea i i next time i'll show you my screen i um as a I think a lot. I think about ideas all the time. Every time I see a problem uh, or someone having a problem with something, I always say, well, I'm going to come up with a solution, right? So uh, I have a notebook with probably a thousand ideas on it that I've been writing on it. The notebook is online. It's, uh, it's on, I use OneNote, Microsoft OneNote, which is a program to take notes. Every time I think of something, I just take out my phone. I just type a few things down. And I might not look at it for another five years or 10 years, but maybe 10 years later, one day I'm like, hey, this person is having the exact problem that I had thought of the solution before. So I, let me go back and see what I wrote. And I do that a lot. And a lot of those past knowledge and past ideas come back to the forefront. And that's how I end up uh, just continue to innovate, innovate. Because every time life is, life is short, every time you think of something, it's valuable. Even if it's not realistic or if it's not applicable, or it's not really that useful in the meantime like right now just write it down you will you will probably benefit from later so yeah do planning and uh, think about what you can do do planning and see if you can come up with a plan that will get you the 10,000 I have no doubt that you can find something to do there's a lot of um, small home-based businesses and entrepreneurs that makes uh, way more than that so it's a very realistic and good goal to have uh, as a matter of fact before before this coronavirus thing hit, I was going to, I was in the process of opening a, a co-working space right outside of Philadelphia. We, we were in the process of buying a building and having it renovated, but it all got halted. But I wanted to have it done. This is mid-May, mid-April. I wanted to have it done already now because I was going to start a um, incubator for home-based businesses. I actually wanted to find small businesses who wants to take their game to the next level or just simply to get started. I was going to get everybody into a cohort so we can go through the planning process and everything that I wanted to do uh, and that I can teach and everybody will work together, learn from each other and hopefully at the end of the summer we will be able to launch their businesses and I'll provide the assistance both 
some financial assistance and most definitely the professional assistance to get everything launched. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of on hold because I don't think that we're going to have the space open. I had a co-working space that's going to be able to accommodate 50 people so everybody can come in and work and use that space as their professional office address and work out of there and work from home. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. doesn't look like it's going to happen this summer. I, my fingers crossed, but I don't think it's going to happen. But on the other hand, you know, every time something that happens that you don't like, it's just an opportunity to uh, try something else. So thank you, Seth. And uh, um, because of the current situation, we're all kind of hurting. We're all kind of um, trying to figure out what the next step is. And that's why I started this live stream. I started to build app. So I still want to start um, this incubator. We can, I still want to do the incubator the program to get people to incubate their business conceptualize and plan their business and launch it so if any of you either on this live stream or after and when you watch the live replay if any of you are still interested in planning out your home-based business or your entrepreneurial business or your small business for growth and for sort of level up leave it in the comments and maybe i can turn this weekly live stream into that I can we can follow through as I'm following through my plan and maybe we can do the incubation this way because uh, you know we I'm at home and I, I want to help as many of you as you you I can that's why I started this channel and present my content this way because I've learned a lot through my own journey through my business journey through my personal journey and I want to share those wisdoms with you and as some of you know me and most of you don't but some of you know, you know me I came from nothing I came from Everybody thought, my family told me I was a waste. I was a wasted life. And that got me to think that I need to do something better for myself. And there's a way to do it. So I've been, I've been really trying really hard. So hopefully I can help you guys in it, at the very least to have you believe that it's not really that it's not easy, but it's not not it's not undoable. It's 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 most certainly doable. Everything, all your dream is reachable and you just have to know one, how to do it, and are two, willing to work hard. Uh, let me check out this question. Eating the frog. Thank you, thank you. I, I you know, I, I feel like um, I will, I'm, I've started, today I've actually decided, because I finished my series of entrepreneurship videos, like the technical skills entrepreneurship, because the spring semester is coming to an end, and I'm, um, I, I've won, run through the gamut of videos, I was thinking, well, what's the next series of video I want to make? And I've decided that I want to make a series of videos on how I have uh, basically tell the story of how I overcome being who I was, and trying to make something of myself so I will make a series of videos and going from the beginning like I uh, starting off from dropping out of high school and starting off from working in a restaurant so living on the streets and getting my first apartments and how did I you know all the lessons there because the lessons are all there I it took 20 it took 20 years 20 some years for me to get to this point but I gone through a lot but looking back nothing was really all that difficult but if I took the if I took the um if I took the the attitude that well it's too difficult you know like when I was a, when I was homeless a high school dropout living on a street and I used to tell the the kids I hang out with I was in L A and West Hollywood and I was telling the kids like oh those rich people over there I'm gonna be like them one day you know I'm gonna drive a nice car I'm gonna have I, I'm I'm gonna be like I'm gonna do better than them and people are always laughing at me like you know you stupid who's gonna be able to do that I had someone uh, I'm gonna do, give a shout out to someone that commented I was doing back and going back and forth on the comments on the million dollar video I think Mel is his name and I invited him, I invited him to come and look at his video I um he says that it takes money to make money and I didn't say it's absolutely correct if you have money it's so much easier to make money but it doesn't mean if you don't have money you cannot make money right but I know many of you are thinking the same thing like it, it would be so much easier if I just had more money Right? If I have more money, then I can make more money and I can put it in the bank. I can invest in stocks. I can buy real estate. All those things are true. Absolutely. Life is so much easier when you start off at a higher level. But that doesn't mean you, through hard work, cannot climb up the ladder. So that's what I, that's what I said to myself when I was 17 and living in L, on the streets of L.A. I did not want to give up. 
And I've also seen the good life, right? Um, I came to the U.S. and I went to a, I went to a boys school, a pretty exclusive boys school. Got kicked out, but uh, before that, I got to see how rich people live. I got to see how life was different on the other side. What does it mean to have a silver spoon in your mouth? I didn't have it, but I saw how it happened. And I also realized that everybody, I can be just as capable as everyone else. As a matter of fact, I think, I think I worked harder. So then if I can take my sweat and blood and my wisdom and my willingness to do whatever it takes to, be, to succeed, and I think I have a better work ethic than most people I've met. So if I take my work ethic and work really hard, then it's got to be some result. But in order to make myself not disappointed, I took very, very small steps. I said, you know, the first thing is I want to get off the street. I want to make enough money so I can rent a room. And how much does it cost? Oh, well, it takes $10 a day. This is in the 90s. It takes $10 a day to be in a boarding house. Okay, fine. How hard it is to make $10? And to give you a preview of this lesson, you know how I made $10? I couldn't get a job. I made $10 by walking around LA and picking up loose change. So, you know, people drop loose change and I see penny. I still pick up every single penny I see today. Not because I need the penny, but it's 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 a mindset, it's attitude. So if you want to do a social experiment, oh, don't do it because we're supposed to stay in house. But if we weren't staying, if we didn't have to stay in house, if you were to go around in a large city like in New York and Philadelphia and LA, walk around for eight hours, I can bet you you can pick up quite a few dollars of change. So if back then, if my goal is to get off the street to be able to rent a room so I don't have to sleep on the street, no one will give me a job. Okay, I'll just go around and pick up change. That's what I did. I ate off of 50 cents a day. I bought I bought food that other people were throwing out and I saved the rest of the money and got myself a little room so now I have a roof over, over my head and would, then I have a place to shower, I have a place to clean up, then I can be more presentable than I when I got an actual job. That's how I got started. So through that little bit of life lessons I realized it, life is all about incremental change. You know, many of us dream of a million dollars, or I dream of a billion dollars. Hopefully one day I can make it. If I don't, it's okay, I try it. But I dream of a billion dollars. You might dream of a million, dream of a million dollars. My guy Sky wants to make $10,000. Well, it's all doable, but it's even more doable if you lower the target, knowing that you can take that as the next step. So when you reduce the barrier for yourself, if you make your goals easier to achieve, you will achieve it quickly. Like if Sky says, I want to make $1,000 a month as an entrepreneur, not $10,000. i am not saying $10,000 is, is bad. But if you were to say to yourself, I want to make $1,000 a, a month as an entrepreneur, then you go out and actually do it, right? You did it. You're making $1,000 a month. Now, one, you believe in yourself because you just achieved something. There's, the, there's a sense of victory. There's a sense of, I just did exactly what I set out to do. And two, you've learned. You didn't have to go to school to learn that knowledge. Um, making it's the same challenge facing making a thousand dollars as ten thousand dollars as fifty thousand as a hundred thousand is that you have to make your customers happy. So if you go out there and make if you're able to make a hundred dollars, make a thousand dollars, you are learning how to keep your customers happy. You're making how to do the things that you do well, and if you already knew knew it, you're doing it better through practice, and then you're learning how to market yourself. So that kind of skill is then will turn around and the next month you will be able to uh, uh, maybe make $5,000, $2,000, maybe 5000 and a year from now you'll, make 10, 000, you'll make, be making 10000 But if you start off by aiming at a million dollars, most of you are not going to go do it. Because you're going to say, well, damn, it's so hard. How am I going to make a million dollars? I've never knew how to make that much money. So um, go ahead and let's, uh, let's just not do it. And that's what I see a lot. I I teach a lot of young kids. I teach in the college. I teach entrepreneurship at the college, as you know. And they most of them come from uh, sort of a lower middle class or lower socioeconomic background. Many of you are um, intimidated into not wanting to uh, do it because it's just scary. It's scary, and it's a scary. It's a it's a fear of failure. And I, you know, a lot of startup people. You go watch like Elon Musk or. Uh, Tim Cook or whoever, uh, Steve Jobs, they say, learn from your mistakes. Well, it's easy for rich people to say, learn from your mistakes because they can afford to fail. If you start a business and fail, well, you can go back home and 
live in your mom's house, or live, live in your parents' house and start over again. So I can understand for most of us don't have that kind of resource, we don't want to fail. But you do learn from doing things wrong. That's we learn from we learn how to walk from falling. We learn how to swim by choking on water really. So don't be afraid to fail, but also make yourself easier and set your goals realistic and plausible and move on a step at a time. Uh, hi Jay, how are you? You asked if I can recommend three books. Um, I can think of three books to recommend you. Um, not right on top, uh, right off the top of my head, but let me write this down. Um, I will remember this. I will, I will pick some books and I will go over them. So maybe next week, maybe I won't do three at a time. I'll find, I'll find a book that I will, I think that's will be beneficial, and then I will. Um, I will talk about that the next time that we I do next Tuesday when I do a live chat and then see how you guys like it and then maybe I'll find a book that's relevant to the topic at the time and then we will then I'll keep on um, recommending it and other books so did that work hopefully um, hopefully I can introduce some to you I do use a book I use a book for my class I don't actually for my entrepreneurship class I don't actually use a textbook I use a book that teaches you how to write business plans not that I because I think you need to know how to necessarily write a good business plan but the the process of writing a business plan really gets you to think really hard uh, about the business you want to start and um, how you want to go about becoming successful and how you run a successful business. So the the business plan guidebook really help you do that. It engages you and asks you questions that you have to answer. So maybe I will start off with that book because that's the book I picked to teach my class. So um, and it would it's not even that expensive. You can probably get it on Amazon for uh, even used. Or maybe there might even be a uh, ebook. So I'll look into that and I'll share that next week. And I will continue to uh, recommend things. And also, there is a lot of free. Well, there's a lot of re free resources as well. Believe it or not, like if you ever, if you guys ever want to start a business, and you know, a lot. One of the most asked questions for me. So I do a lot of community workshops and stuff. One of the most asked questions is, how do I start a business? And many, some of you might have uh, heard about. Um, people can help you set up your business. I run a law firm. I set up business for people for a thousand dollars, right? But guess what? You can do it yourself. It really is not that difficult. What I'm, how I, why am I making a thousand dollars helping somebody set up a company? Is because there's an information gap. The information is out there in the world. If you look really hard, you will find the information you need. And just like you go on YouTube, you you look long enough, you'll find me, and I'll give you some information you need. But you have to weed through a whole lot of other videos and a whole lot of other information websites. And the government really, government and other people don't really do a good job of giving you the right information. So you hire people or you learn from people that knows what they're doing uh, to shorten that information gap. So my goal and my purpose being on YouTube and starting this channel is to shorten that information gap for you guys. Um, so... But there, there are resources out there. There's a lot of free resources. A lot of actually, believe it or not, there's a lot of people like me who want to help others to become better entrepreneurs. Because I truly believe entrepreneurship is a social change agent. Anyone that suffers through poverty, through being poor, or just through like hopelessness, or just feel like your life is not as satisfy as satisfying as you think it could be. And a job is usually not going to be the way out. Education is. I do teach in college, and I did go back to college. Education really do help. But it again, I went to college in my 30s. It's just the path that I chose. But I really, truly believe in entrepreneurship. Working for yourself, developing ideas, and running small businesses is really the kind of blessing that will get you um, the satisfaction that you are seeking. And that's why I say I want to guide you through success and freedom and satisfaction because um, I really truly believe through personal experience and also by seeing through other people their other people's lives that you can get there so that's a long way to way to say yes I will look for resources to share and uh, I also once in a while I see something on YouTube that I actually really enjoy so I if I find the videos that I think as I make this new series of uh, videos on how to succeed in life and in business and you know following through my my own journey I will make sure to recommend those as well alright well uh, 
Thank you very much, and thank you for hanging around, Hector. I, I'm glad that you you you're here to um, to ask questions and to participate. And uh, I really think I don't know if you you are or you're not, but I really think you should make some how-to videos because it's very difficult. I have a chainsaw downstairs. I haven't touched it for years because uh, I'm actually a little afraid of mess like not maintain maintaining it. And I start using it, it's probably cut my finger off. So. Um, make some videos. If you need help on how to make a video, how to get started on YouTube, let me know. I'll do a session on how to get started on YouTube because I just started, I just started this channel as you guys know, like two months ago. So there is a way to grow. There is a way to market yourself. There is a way to do that. And uh, yes, please do so. And you can be successful. And I'll see you next. And good night in Florida. I'll see you next week, hopefully. And uh, let me know if you have any questions ahead of time, so I'll actually work into my um, work into my um, uh, my agenda that I hung up there. So, or just come with the questions like this time. So, I'm I'm so glad that you joined me. You enjoy you joined us, and have a good night and be safe in Florida. And uh, for everyone else, I guess uh, I've gone through my agenda, and I'm open for questions. If you have any, if not, then. Uh, I'll, we can. I'll be back next Tuesday at ten o'clock. And just to say why I chose ten o'clock, I'm on the East Coast. I mean, I'm right outside of Philadelphia. Um, I choose ten o'clock because my kids go to kids are in the house. Kids go to bed at at about eight o'clock, and you know I relax for a little bit, eat something, then I get to work. So from you guys don't know me, I work during. The, I do the teaching stuff during the day. I do my lawyer stuff during the day. I also work on new projects at night. I frequently work from, I'd say maybe about nine, nine, nine thirty to one or two o'clock in the morning, and those time are not, you know, I don't make money doing those things, but I conceptualize, I plan, I do planning for new projects, or I make apps, or I make websites, and I, or I cut my videos. I'm not making money doing this, but this is stuff that I want to do, and I feel like that's gonna add to eventual, add to something I'm doing. That's what I choose to do. So I work at night a lot. So 10 o'clock is actually not that late. I'm actually going to get off of this and go do some other work, maybe work on the app for a little bit. But for the people on the West Coast, this is only 7, this is what, 7, oh, 8 o'clock. So this is pro so I'm trying to accommodate everyone. And I also noticed that a lot of you are watching my videos late at night. So I'm just simply trying to accommodate. So anyway. Thank you for everyone that joined today. I'm so glad you were here and you're taking the first step towards something grand. I believe it. I feel it. So um, just follow along. I'm starting something new as of today. If you missed the beginning, rewind to the beginning and hear what I'm doing in the beginning. But I'm starting something new today and along with you as a part of this live stream, I will go over it every week. I will put lessons into the updates so I can talk about things each week. And I will answer questions, talk about you guys. And hopefully I can see you guys undertake something like Hector, maybe make some videos and maybe Sky can come up with a plan to to make your $10,000 a month. And uh, um, hopefully hopefully you come up with the right plans and we can all move forward. And Jay, I will get I will get the book recommendation and think about what you can do as well. So we can all grow together. And... Uh, Again, thank you for joining me. I'm, I'm so glad that you guys joined me and I look forward to future conversations. And I hope everybody is staying well in this difficult time. Um, I don't know how, I don't know when we will go back to normal. I don't know if we're going back to normal, but um, everybody should stay safe. I want, and um, I want everyone to, to be able to hit the ground running when the world opens back up. So let's take the next few weeks. It'll be at least a few weeks, but let's take the few weeks, think about what we can do, and let's uh, try to become, oh, let's be successful. Not even try, I believe in you guys. Be successful. All right, so good night, everyone. Thank you for watching, and uh, please join me next week. And if you have a question that you want to answer and you can't join, just uh, once I put the live stream up, Please, uh, I, I think you can comment on the live stream even before once it's scheduled. So then put your comments and questions there and I will address them next week. All right. Thank you so much and have a good night and have a good rest of the week. Be successful.